All right, good morning, guys. In today's video, we're gonna be attempting to install adaptive cruise control on my 2023 F-150 Lightning Pro. Um, this is, I don't know what I'm really getting myself into. This might be pretty tricky, but um, we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot. I'm about 90% sure this is gonna work on my truck. You guys should definitely uh, check out the F-150 Lightning Forum thread. Uh, search for adaptive cruise control DIY. There's a lot of great information from the guys that have done this before. I would not have been able to do this without them. Uh, but uh, first and foremost, we're gonna need to check out and make sure the truck has the correct wiring. Um, I'll show you guys approximately where to look uh, to double check that. Um, my truck, like I said, is 2023 F-150 Lightning Pro. It's pretty much maxed out. It's got the ma uh, max tow package, uh, tow technology, pro power onboard, all that kind of stuff. So. I'll show you what I've got. If yours matches, you might be okay, but I still recommend going to the F50 Lightning Forum and checking out that adaptive cruise control thread just to make sure you're good to go. If you have any questions, you can post them there. Those guys are really helpful. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get started and uh, we'll see what we can do. Hopefully this works, fingers crossed. So as far as some of the parts we're gonna need, uh, this is actually my old steering wheel. I installed a leather one, but it came with these buttons. These are what you need. These have the controls for the adaptive cruise control. So I'm gonna steal these and put these back onto the leather steering wheel that I have. Uh, then we have a wiring harness that connects everything up. And here's the big piece. This is the radar, basically, that goes on the front behind the bumper. We'll get that installed. And then uh, a couple bolts to hold everything together. Not too much, pretty simple, simple as far as that goes. And then we are gonna need a laptop with a OBD2 hookup so that we can hook up Foreskin and get everything turned on. Um, yeah, so right now I'll uh, start popping some panels off and we can check out some wiring and make sure our truck is uh, good to go. All right. All right, first up, we're going to come to the driver's side and we're going to pull this panel off and check some of the wiring behind here. So we're going to pull up from down here, kind of work your fingers in here, feel the tabs start coming up. Try and be real gentle so we don't break anything. <laughs> I'm gonna fish that out like that. And there's that. And then the wiring is gonna be behind here, so we're gonna have to go underneath, unhook it, and we'll pull it through here. Let me uh, just get my boundaries and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're looking in this hole right here and there's basically, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit, there we go. There's two harnesses here. I got my hand reaching underneath. There's one up top and one on bottom. It's this one right here that I've got my, my hand wrapped around. So there's a tab on the right side, we'll pull that and then we'll work this thing out. I'm gonna need two hands, so I'll put this down, but once I get it out, I'll uh, show okay, it Okay, so we got that unhooked, pulled out a little bit. Here's the plug, Just we're just checking the wires at this point. Um, I believe it's these bottom four on the left. If you have those wires, you can pretty much check this off. Uh, if you don't, you can stop right here because you, uh, you, you cannot proceed, unfortunately. So yeah, check those wires and then we'll plug this back in and we'll move on the other side and check that one as well. So yeah, plug right. that in until you hear a pop. Then you can reach your hand out and we can put this panel back on. So we're, we're done here. So we'll fish this side in. If I can get this with one hand. And then we'll line up our push pins. Click them back in like we were never here. All right, let's move over. Okay, this next side is much trickier. We are in the passenger footwell. And first we're gonna pull some of these plastic retainer pins off. Where are they? Yeah, here's one. I think there's three here. Two and three, yeah. So we'll, we'll pull these out. We're gonna use a trim removal tool like this. Just get it kind of pop it out until it comes. Uh, be real gentle not to break these. And then we'll get access to that plug, which is still very difficult to reach out of a flashlight and then uh, it's, it's way up in the corner back here, so you, you can only use one hand. Uh, I was really struggling with it the other day, but we'll give it a go right now and see if we can get that unseated. All right, so yeah, we got that. So there's not much trick to it. This is just pushed in, so just kind of work them left and right until it uh, unseats. Might have to give it a little bit of a pull. And we have a plug here, so we'll pull this clip and then put this up here just so it's out of the way. I'll show you where the plug is. We have my, I got my flashlight going. And we're underneath. <laughs> And it is this one, way in the corner. So we can kind of pull that plastic clip and that'll come off and then we can kind of work it out. That's the plan at least. That's what I was struggling with the other day. So I'm gonna undo that. I think you just push this forward and then that will slide out of the way and then we'll give it a, see if we can get it out of there. <laughs> Check the wiring. All right, that's what we're gonna do. 
Okay, I've been mungy with this for a while and I can knock it. This thing to unseat. <laughs> I've got it unhooked from the back and the clip undone, which I did with a long screwdriver, but I cannot get it. So what I'm gonna do is check the wiring. Um, I have a list of the wires you need. Um, let's see. So there's four wires you need to check as far as coloring. We have a solid gray. We have a green and white, gray, blue, and a brown blue. So if you can verify those are there and the other side checks out, then you should be good. All right, once we verified all that, we can push this back in and then get these all, get these clips lined up and reinstalled. Then it's time to take the front out. There we go. This is all back in. Okay, next step, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna unhook the 12 volt battery just to make everything nice and safe. So I believe that's a 10 mil. We'll unscrew that and then we'll pop that off. Let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute and then we'll uh, keep going with the rest of it. All right, next step, we're gonna go around these clips and we're gonna basically turn these 180 or 90 degrees. And these things, this plastic should start popping. Up. There's one, we'll do the same on the other side. All right, next up, we're gonna take off these four basically retainer clips um, right here and here and here with a T45 Torx. And I'm gonna zip these off with my impact. So take those off and go on there. All right, once you get those off, then we have two 13 millimeters, millimeter bolts down here. So we'll zip those off too. All right, after getting those two bolts, we're gonna unhook the power going to the to the front. So over here, where my finger is, push the pin in and pull, you need two hands, I already loosened this, so it'll come right out. And then you don't have to worry about the rest of the wiring, that's the only real connection to the truck. All right, then we're gonna take these plastic pieces off in the front, this one, this one. These, these are gonna pull out. Uh, be real gentle though, I actually broke one of the clips on the bottom. So you can see they're just push pins, but that one right there, I kind of cracked it. So be real gentle and slowly and just pull them straight out if you can. And then, uh, yeah, that'd be good. All right, after that, then we're gonna take these 13 millimeter bolts out. There's one here, two down there, and then more or less the same thing on this side. One here, and then two down there. And then this thing's basically ready to lift All right, out. This thing's ready to lift out. So we're gonna, obviously we have a kind of a lip right here. So we're gonna lift up and then pull back. And it's kind of awkward because it's so big, but I'm gonna mount the camera right now and then I'll uh, I'll do it in front of you guys so you can see how it's done. All right. All right, here we go. Here's the innards. Underneath the front, pretty neat, interesting stuff. Uh, one quick thing you might want to do is where is that thing? The uh, front speaker, I believe it was right here. I already took it out, but you can push this out, and then there's a wire down here that you can fish out. And once you do that, you can unhook the speaker. Probably just wrap an electrical tape and tuck it back in, but keep the speaker that way it doesn't beep. I just did that recently, and it's a it's a major upgrade. I highly recommend it. So, yeah, definitely uh, definitely should do that if you haven't. Okay, already. now to take the the bumper off. Here's kind of the the frame right here, and then we have three 21 millimeter bolts around it. There's two right here. There's one on this side, which I'm probably gonna have to take this felt piece off to get to, and then. The same basically on the other side, one on that side, and then two on this side. But again, I'm probably gonna have to remove whatever that is. I'm not really even sure. So yeah, that's how we're gonna have to get to that. All right, next up, we're gonna remove this painted piece of the bumper right here by taking off these two screws and then slowly popping it around until it works its way off. Okay, so we got that piece. So like I said, just slowly work that way out. And then when you get to these pieces, you might have to take a flathead screwdriver just to help them along. Probably half of them came out on their own, but the rest I kind of had to just give a little helping hand. And then the bottom pieces are just push pins basically so that, could, that just pulls right out. 
Uh, so yeah, just go slow, take your time. This probably took me 15 minutes to get out. So yeah, just slowly work it out and uh, it'll come nice and easy. Just try your best not to break anything. <laughs> All right, so here's where we're at right now. Okay, next step, we're gonna try and take this plastic piece off. I only see two bolts, so there's one right there, one right there. There probably is one somewhere else. I don't see it, but I'm gonna take those off, see if it comes. If not, I'll, I'll show you where the okay, other one is. Okay, that didn't do it. So what it looks like, after looking a little harder, is these white clips are basically uh, holding it on. Yeah, they're in there. So I got some neon nose pliers. I'm gonna try to squeeze this and see if that, that does it. Okay, that looks like it did it, so. This will slide right out now. All right, truck's getting pretty naked at this point. Okay, that is what I wanted to see. Now we can look down, we have one, two, and three. One, two, and three. So that's the six main bolts that hold the bumper on. So we can undo that, and then this bumper should come right off. Probably a few harnesses we need to unhook, but that seems like that's the main thing holding on. So I'm gonna Go ahead and I'm gonna take those off, those are 21 millimeter, and then hopefully uh, this thing comes right off, all right? All right, next step is to unhook this. This, this, this. this slides over, you need to push down on this piece, and then you can pop this out, and then you can work this plug out. And then I'll show you right now how we're gonna check our wires again, just to make sure we're good. We'll pop this panel off and see. But now I believe the bumper's unhooked from everything, so we just need to undo those bolts. And then we can lower the bumper and start installing. Oh, yeah, secondly, uh, once you get that unhooked, this is gonna just slide forward or back. It's on a little track, so don't try and pull it up. That's what I did initially, and uh, then I realized it's on the track. So, yeah, do that so you don't break anything. Okay, now that we're at this point, we can check another. We can check our wires one more time. This is the connection that goes to the truck, and then the four wires that you need are right here: gray, green, white, gray, blue, and brown, blue. Those are the wires you need. Mine amazingly has it. I actually bought wires just in case I needed to run a few more. And uh, luckily I do not amazingly. So yeah, super lucked out there. Okay, we've got those six more or less taken off. I've got them down to the last thread on one on each side. So the bumper's clearly free. You can see it's sagging pretty good. So we'll have to do some adjusting when we put it back up. Make sure everything lines up nicely. But yeah, we're ready to take this thing off. right here we got to take it off. This side looks good. I think that was it. Not that heavy. Maybe 60 pounds or so. 60, 80 pounds, somewhere in that range, I would guess. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, one small mistake I made. I probably should have done this when it was on the car, but here's the radar. It actually it mounts in front of this plate here. And uh I don't really don't want to take this whole thing off. So what I can do is take this plastic off on the front. You can do this when it's on the truck, it'll probably be easier. Um, so what I did, just put your fingers in like down below and kind of pull this out. They're just push pins. So I'm just going to go around and, and, uh, pull all these out. Give me some room to work right there. Then I can prop this up and, uh, yeah, get this uh, radar. Installed. Okay. So now with that open, we can kind of fish this in and then work it around. And then it's going to sit kind of in this position. There's some, there's some holes already in there. The bolts are going to go in from the other side. 
and then we'll get that bolted in and then start replacing the wiring right, harness. Now we're gonna take our three bolts that we ordered. These already come with Loctite, so we're good there. I don't know what the torque settings are, settings are so I'm just gonna snug them up uh, with my impact. Just go real light, nothing crazy. This thing's not that heavy and the Loctite should hold in place. So it should stay there basically forever. So yeah, we'll get that on and then next up is wiring. Okay, unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to disassemble this quite a bit. Uh, if you can see, here's the wiring harness. It just goes all over. So got some 10 mils right here. These are probably 13s. And we're gonna start zipping some stuff off, trying to remember where it all goes. And then we'll get this wire replaced. Uh, this is gonna take a little while, unfortunately, but gotta do it. Okay, I got the old one about halfway out. This side's all out. Uh, this trim removal tool is gonna be your best friend because there's a few of these that are in tight places, you gotta reach in and you can just pop it right out. The screwdriver might be able to do it, but having the fork on the end is really helpful. So yeah, just go around. You gotta unplug from the sensors. This is your uh, arrows front splitter that deploys up and down. So you gotta unhook that, one on each side. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just getting slowly going around. I started taking it out, realized there's another one, just go in, unhook it, and then just keep on going. So we'll uh, work out this other side and then we can start putting this thing back together. Okay, we got the harness all hooked up as best we can. Some of the plugs, or not the plugs, the push pins don't really line up that best, but it did do the best you can. Um, there does seem to be two extra plugs. I think they're for fog lights or something. So I basically taped them up and zip tied them up and look at the corner on both of them so they're just out of the way. Not gonna have to deal with that. And uh, yeah, we're uh, about ready to put this thing back on and start hooking everything back Okay, up. you got the bumper kind of lightly set up. You definitely wanna support it in a way or push it back and up just so that it's not sagging because there is a bunch of play that can be there. So you wanna get it up, tighten it exactly where you want. I'm gonna get the uh, other trim piece, kind of line it up and make sure it looks good. If not, I'll readjust and do my best. Okay, I got this thing plugged back in. I did have one harness that doesn't go anywhere. Um, I checked with another guy who had the same model truck as me. It, it was built a little bit later, but he uh, he said this this isn't used. So I just taped it up. I'm gonna have zip tie it to the side. A couple of these today, but <laughs> that's okay. Hopefully that's not important. Um, we'll see here when we get it all strapped up and turned on if uh, we got any problems with it. But yeah, that's, that's what we got. So basically just do the reverse of how we did it earlier. So we got four bolts up here one on each side so a total of six on this we'll zip that on keep going okay lifting up the bumper was a good call that kept everything nice and lined up i basically just did it as high as it could go uh just pressed up on the sides and then squared it away and it looks good so start in the middle go slow and just basically work your way out until you can get this thing wrapped around the end same thing over here just yeah take it slow Get it all, get everything pushed in, and yeah, you'll be good. All right, next, just do these two screws on each side, get that secure, and then we'll start putting the front back together. All right, kind of going fast at this point, but I'm trying to get this done so I can have some of my Sunday off. So we're gonna zip those two on, two 13 millimeters. Uh, these three 13 millimeters, two down there, one up here. And then this one, and those two down there as well. Remember to plug this in. And then we got these four, which I'll zip on, and then we can start putting the plastic back in. Okay, we got these things zipped on. Uh, remember, just turn these 90 degrees to tighten them. If they don't want to go, don't force it. Just kind of wiggle it, and eventually it should work its way in, and then you, it should turn relatively easily. You can get those in. So this is more or less in. I got a few more pieces, but not important. I'm going to remember to leave that 12-volt unplugged because we got a monkey with a steering wheel now. So what we need to do, you need to turn the steering wheel to the left or right, and then behind it, There's a slot that you can fit this in. Let's see if we can get that. So we're gonna go in there and you kind of wiggle this around. Let's see if I can get it. There it goes. So there's something you gotta do and then you pull it kind of down and then that's the left side out. Now you gotta turn the steering wheel to the other side and then this piece will come out. Remember, the 12 volt needs to be disconnected for this. You don't want the airbag going on your face. And you need, and if you're just disconnecting the 12 volt now, you need to let it sit for at least 30 minutes, if not more. Let any, every every bit of static electricity drain, because having an airbag going your, off in your face would not be fun. So yeah. Okay. Once you get that to kind of pop out on each side, then this guy will come out, and we can disconnect these. So what you need to do is pull. Oops, sorry. 
those little orange pieces take a little flathead screwdriver those will pop out a bit and then these things will then the yellow pieces will pop out as well and there's also the red tab up here we got to disconnect that get this out of the way and then we can start replacing those okay parts. once you get that this one there's a little pin I, I use a flathead screwdriver just lift up this end so that you can get over the pin and then slide it out these once you get these these orange pieces lift out you can basically just wiggle these up and down and eventually they'll pop out so all right to get these buttons now we need to undo these two uh screws they're a torx fitting i'm not sure of the size i'll go double check that i don't think i have a small enough tool to do this with my impact i got to do it by hand which uh stinks but that's all right it is what it is so we'll take that out slowly and then this part down here is uh is held in with pins or push pins so you can pull that out gently obviously um i did do this before like, like you can see i have a leather steering wheel on my pro i swapped this in um, a few months back so if you want to go back to that video you can check in my profile and uh check that out but yeah we'll get these out and we'll keep on trucking pull these buttons out and then we can uh get everything hooked okay up. i was actually able to get my impact on there i found a torque fit uh, torque bit that says uh, if you can see it it says t20 on the side Let's see. Yeah, T20. I'm not sure if that's accurate. That It seems really small for a T20. Um, maybe that's a different metric that I'm aware of. But yeah, that was able to take that off. So next, we're going to put our hands down here and slowly just work these pins away and pull this away. And then, uh, yeah, unhook the wire. I got that pulled out. There are two uh, plugs you need to unhook on these sides. I think I might need to replace that harness. I'm going to double check, though. Um, so this is what it looks like. We just need to un unzip these. On both sides and we can pull these right off and put the new buttons on okay we got the new buttons swapped over you can see the one that has the following distance up there in the corner that didn't have before got those tightened down yeah it's just those three three little torque screws uh they're really small it's the smallest torques i could find in my whole garage and i did do it by hand but uh yeah so we're all along we're gonna go hook up our harnesses uh, I, I checked the harness with the with the old and new one and they're exactly the same so no need to swap them so yeah we'll get this plugged in hooked up and uh, or almost got, our there. got our new buttons on so we'll just get these all hooked up remember to push these orange pieces down after you plug them in or else these will not work i had a problem with that before so yeah i'll do that and then the airbag just 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 pops in it's held in with some little clips so yeah almost there all right with the steering wheel all hooked up and it's time to uh plug the 12 volt back in that we can get the laptop hooked up and uh get this thing going all right, guys, I'm actually coming to you from the future right now, but I just wanted to give a little bit of a warning. So we got the computer hooked up with the OBD2 uh, to the USB, plugged in. We got Forescan open, and we got our values here. I'm, this is not going to be – I'm not going to go through every single one of these because there are an absolute ton. I'll, I'll, as you can see right here, this is the FM50 Lightning Forum. You need to go through, and there's basically like one or two numbers that you need to change in every single one of these bit by bit. So – Instead of doing that, I'm just going to post this uh, list that you can go to on the M50 Lightning Forum, and you can follow this and go down one by one. Like I said, this took me a little while to do all this, and I actually had to go back twice because the first time I did it, um, it didn't take – well, I mean, it, it did seem to work, and then I went to calibrate everything, and the truck was not just not calibrating for whatever reason. So I went back and checked some of my mistakes and fixed that. But yeah, just as a little warning, if this is your first time using Forescan, you might want to n not do this immediately. Uh, maybe do something that's easier just to get your feet wet. Uh, you can check out some of my other videos for either like the bed lights or I did the keypad on the side. Those were really easy. There were like little boxes that you go into and it says, do you want to turn on the bed lights? Yes or no. And then you change it to Y for yes or something like that. Really, really easy. These are, this is much more technical. And there's lots of numbers that can be really intimidating, confusing. So you kind of need to have a good understanding of what you're dealing with and then go slow and just make sure you just do everything by the book. Uh, like I said, I, I'm not a four scan expert in the slightest. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of learning by doing at the moment. So just just be warned because uh, you, you could probably screw something up pretty badly if you change the wrong input and not realize it. Uh, my other thing of advice would be uh, take pictures the before the after everything as you as you're going along if you did make a mistake and you need to go back and change it it's going to be a lot easier if there's photos but yeah now that that's out of the way once you go through and make all these changes you're going to have to um write all these in cycle the engine on and off probably a dozen times or so and the force scan is going to keep asking you to do it um you just follow this list 
pretty meticulously. And then after that, you can, you can finally get to what's, um, we're at the end here where I want you to kind of reset everything. No, I'm sorry, not reset, but, uh, re restart everything, the truck, foreskin, all that. And then you're going to clear all the DTC codes. And to do that, go up here, you click on DTC, everything's going to be here. And then there's going to be a trash can. You click on the trash can, it's going to, it's going to delete everything on its own. And then after that, you're gonna we're gonna need to calibrate. And for this, you're gonna want the, the laptop is gonna need to stay in the truck, um, stay hooked up, and you're gonna be driving around with this uh, on your passenger seat, basically. So what you do is you go to uh, the the little wrench right there, and you're gonna select uh, CCM calibration, like it says here. And then it's basically gonna have you drive around for a while. Um, it, it says uh, you're supposed to be above 30s where, where it takes its readings. So for me, it took about five minutes for it to go from zero to 99. And then from 99 uh, to 100 took another 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I was kind of worried it was stuck, but just keep driving. Eventually we'll uh, go away. And uh, it also had something on the dash that said something about the, the radar was out of alignment. That stayed on the whole time until the, I hit 100%, then that cleared automatically and it was ready to go. But what I was going to say is uh, the first time I did this, I, uh, I had some inputs that I didn't fill out all the way. I thought I was just supposed to do the last two numbers, and it turned out I was supposed to do the whole thing. I'll show you. Let's see. We're scrolling through here. It's here. Under the IPM, you're supposed to take a screenshot of this, and then... You go to the CCM and you're supposed to input this. I thought it was just these last two on each of them, so that's what I did. That's wrong. You actually need to do copy the entire thing. It's not super clear, but copy those, and then you input those into the CCM under these numbers. I'm sorry, under these categories, then you fill out the boxes with uh, with these numbers. So once I fixed that, it everything was right, and then when I went to calibrate, it was correct. So... Yeah, the rest of it's just punching codes. Like I said, I'll put links to this. Uh, this is a much better explanation than I can do in a short amount of time. This will take me a long time to do it one-handed and and go through number by number. And every truck is different again. So take this uh, take this as your warning. Uh, if your truck has everything that it needs, it has all the wiring, everything correct, and you want to take this on, do so at your own risk. Um, I'm not guaranteeing this is going to work for every truck, but it worked for mine. And the guy who posted this, his was on an XLT. So that's pretty good coverage so far, I'd say. But yeah, so that's that. I'm uh, And then now I'm going to cut to when I was uh, driving the, the truck and calibrating. And then you guys can see from there. All right, guys, here we are. We're trying to calibrate. We have the laptop hooked up, set to calibrate on the CCM or the cruise control module. Um, we have this... Uh, warning it says front sensor not aligned apparently that's pretty normal and uh here we are filling out our graph it wants us to drive above 30 and see we're up to about 37 percent and that should be climbing i might need to slow down a little now there it goes 40 41 so yeah doing good um i monkeyed around with it before and i was getting nothing but it turned out i just had some four scan values that were wrong uh so yeah i'm gonna finish this up and Hopefully we'll be just about there. All right, we got it. Drove around for probably 10 to 15 minutes after it hit 90%, 99%, and then it finally engaged. Gotta bump that up a little bit, but yeah, it's totally working. It's actually, it actually seems to steer a bit too, which I'm shocked by. Uh, but yeah, the adaptive cruise control is totally working and we have no codes or anything. So this is a success so far. I'm very excited for this. This is great. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. So um, just a couple of things I want to say, I just want to reiterate, uh, this job is pretty difficult. Um, if you've never done anything like this, this might be over your head, frankly. Um, the Most of the tools and stuff uh, and removing the parts, that's not too bad. You do want to be really gentle with the plastic though, because I actually broke a couple little mounts on the front. Not this time, I actually broke them before when I was uh, removing the front, taking the speaker out. So you want to be real careful with that. And then on top of that, the Forescan stuff is, is a little bit technical. Uh, if you have no experience with Forescan, this might be too much for you. Um, you probably want to practice on something else or uh, talk to somebody uh, because if you put the wrong inputs in certain places, you could cause problems. Um, the only way to mitigate that is if you've never done it before, uh, do a lot of research, take your time, take lots of photographs of everything before you change it. 
and uh, you might be all right. You, you'd probably be all right in that regard. And then just, uh, I'd say if you have a lot of questions, I'm not a four scan expert, so maybe talk to the Evan 50 Lightning Forum. There's a lot of really knowledgeable guys there. Or if you talk to someone who, who knows four scan really well. Unfortunately, that's not me. I'm just kind of like following directions. But I, I've done it a number of times, so I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, these, uh, the total cost, I think parts are around 500. I actually already had the buttons, which you, which you definitely want. Um, so you, you can adjust it. Apparently you don't need them. It will just lock the uh, adaptive cruise control in level three or something like that. But you can adjust it with the buttons. They're not super expensive. I just happened to have them because they came with the steering wheel I got a while back. So I've swapped them on and off a couple times now. Um, otherwise, uh, the feature is awesome. This is one of the features I was most jealous of my wife's car about. I do a lot of highway miles going to job sites all over the place. And adaptive cruise is very nice. Just makes it so much more relaxing. I, I do, I, I'm typically in cruise control at 70, 75, whatever it is. And so I'm, normally I'm on and off it, just like got to pass this car or whatever, do that. Now it, it's all automatic. So that's such a nice feature that you don't have to do that. The truck will automatically slow down or speed up once the traffic clears. That's awesome. I really, really like that. And the fact that it seems to steer a little bit too, wasn't expecting that. Um, it's not like full self driving or anything, but I think it will just kind of keep you in your lane. Um, I, I let it go. I wasn't touching it. It was kind of going around with some slight turns and it did start to yell at me after like 15, 10 or 15 seconds. It said something like, please take control or something like that. But even so, like having, just having that feature at all is really nice. So that's going to make road tripping uh, really relaxing. So I really like that. But yeah, hope you guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed and uh, really happy. This is the, the best feature I've added to the truck so far. One I was really, really jealous of some of the nicer trims about. So being able to add that for about $500 and half a day's work is uh, not too shabby. So hopefully this helps you guys if you want to take it on or not. If you're scared away by this, I totally understand. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best. Like I said, I'm not a four scan expert at all. Um, if you if you have some real technical questions, you'll want to dive into the F-150 Lightning forums. Um, I got super lucky. My truck had all the wiring already, so there wasn't anything required. I, I wasn't expecting that. I actually bought some of the wires to do, to, to rewire parts of it and add power for the radar and all that. I didn't need it, luckily, but a lot of people aren't so lucky. I know this like the standard, the 311A, is it 311 and 312 or the, the base XLT, I don't think has the wiring. I think it's something to do with the 360 cameras or something to that effect. But yeah, read through this forum, make sure your truck your truck has everything because you'd hate to order all the parts and get in there and then your SOL basically, which that yeah, would totally stink. So please don't let that happen. You do do, do some research, read through this, this thread before ordering parts and uh, you'll, you'll thank yourself in the end. So yeah, that's all I got. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, hope you guys can make your trucks a hell of a lot better. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome feature. So, um, yeah, I say good luck to you and I'll see you on the next one.